started a long time ago, and uh, of course, who'll forget the triple overtime game that Steve Alford hit a winning shot at to keep that streak going. Ed Hightower, Mike Sanzer, and Randy Drury, our officials, and we are underway. Sam Oki and Andre Patterson. Andre gets that tap. Robbie Eggers, 6'10", sophomore, a surprise start for the Hoosiers. Hadn't seen a lot of action recently, but does give Indiana some good size inside. Brian Evans posts up early. And a quick foul is called. That's Moselle Peterson. Normally their sixth man gets the call to start tonight. Well, I think you made a good point about Robbie Eggers being inserted for rebounding purposes primarily. Plus, I think he gives us good outside shooting. That time you saw him also make a good entry pass to Brian Evans. He may be in there for his passing ability. Brian Evans falls down, but is able to hit that two-pointer to give Indiana the early lead. I think that's real important for Indiana in any game they play is to get Brian Evans off early. Slowed down tempo now. More so on the defensive end than offensively. Here's Doherty, the sophomore out of Vincennes. 13 is Peterson. Here's Sam Oakey, the highly touted freshman. Right out of Cassville, Wisconsin. The first shot is off, and Eggers has the rebound. It'll be a man-to-man -man defense. Evans off the dribble this time, misses. Laz, I think the fans are really going to enjoy watching Oki play tonight. This is obviously the first opportunity for any of us to see him play, but he's real aggressive, both from a scoring standpoint as well as rebounding. So take a look at him, number four. 14 is Jeremy Hall, 5'10 freshman. He's their point guard. Oki tries to go baseline. You see Eggers is on Oki. Number five is Hensi Oriental. Misses on that baseline shot. A great block out by Andre Patterson there. And one of the things the Indiana coaches emphasized was you've got to get to Doherty, and you've got to get to Oki and block them out. Good shot fake there by Reed. Indiana, of course, has gone to Evans here early, but they do need other people involved in the offense. Lob pass. Triple team. And Wisconsin has their first turnover. That's a, a, an indication for Andre to move towards the ball, move into the uh, free throw area, and try to make himself open for Brian's pass back to him to get that triple team away from Brian Evans. Somebody's got to be open if there's a triple team, and Evans tried to find him that time. All in quickly to Doherty. In fact, the same type of pass that beat Indiana rolled these many years ago in 73. Side. Good block out by Patterson, gets the rebound. Eggers beats everyone down the floor and is going to go to the line. That was really good recognition by Wilkerson and Eggers. Wilkerson to see that Eggers was out running, and Eggers took off and saw the open lane. You're going to see this all night if the Indiana coaches have their way, and that's a block out type of rebound, not just one where Andre runs up and jumps, grabs the rebound, but first puts a body on his man, then goes after the ball. Eggers very flat on that free throw. Robbie's been shooting well from the three-point line recently, especially up at the Hoosier Classic. But only a second free throw, two out of nine from the free throw line. Indiana 3-0, just underway from Bloomington. Sean Wilkerson. Draws the assignment on Peterson, and Aaron Pass is going to go out of bounds. Turnover. Vic Bennett coach teams handle the ball very well. He's in his first year at Wisconsin, 20th year as a head coach, but they did have 20 turnovers against Penn State, and it cost them that game. I think with the start in this game right now, Indiana needs to continue to apply the pressure defensively because I think a little bit of nerves here for some of these young Wisconsin players, and you've got to play upon that by playing good, solid defense. Evans on the drive, another tough shot is missed. Swinia's offense not on key yet. A little over three minutes into this game. Good drive by Oakley. He's a strong kid. Eggers steps in the line, second Wisconsin turnover. Patterson's got it low, drive to the hoop, it's off. That's the one he's got to take in and jam. Absolutely. 
good entry pass that time. I think Indiana is a lot more conscious of getting the proper angles to get it into the, to Brian Evans or an Andre Patterson. Man, you got to finish that. High low passing. This goes to Doherty, blocked by Eggers. So Robbie Eggers taking advantage of this start. Wilkerson tries to fight through two Badgers. And Hensi Oriental, 6'1", freshman from Montreal, Canada, draws the foul. This guy's an offensive threat. Averaging just about 13 a game in his last eight. There's number 20, Sean Carlin, 6'3", junior in the, line, in the lineup. Indiana still looking to get it in. Looks like they're setting up uh, quite a bit on the low post, especially with Evans. Here's a read on a drive. Jumper is off. Four minutes into the game, Wisconsin still looking for their first point. And they've got him three at a time. In fact, Mosel Peterson, a good three-point shooter, their third leading scorer, hits it. It's 4-3, uh, 3-3, tied up, Indiana and Wisconsin. Shot fake and opens the passing lane. But good defense there. Doherty steps around. Two turnovers for Indiana. I think Brian was on uh, Andre a little bit there to hold his position a little longer for the entry pass. And that pass awry. Good camera angle there as Carlin throws it out. We've got timeout. Low scoring affair favors the Badgers. Dick Bennett pleased with that. We'll be back after these messages. This will be an offensive foul on the screen away from the ball. Andre Patterson picks that up. Steve Indiana's offense just has not clicked here early. No, it hasn't. And I know that was a set play from the timeout. And Andre wanted to set a real good, solid screen, but instead picked up a pretty cheap foul there. But he fouled him. Patterson doing a nice job on Oki, not creating any offensive chance for him. Ed Hightower with a whistle. This is traveling on Doherty on the pivot foot. Four turnovers now for Wisconsin. Well, you made a good point about Andre Patterson's defensive play on Oki, as well as Robbie Eggers has done a real effective job on Sean Doherty right now, keeping him out of the offense. Evans low. Indiana's gone five minutes now without scoring as they scored early at the 1940 mark, and Patterson misses that one. You may see a change here for Andre. He just hasn't gotten into the flow of the game. Or there may be a change that puts him in a different position on the floor so that he plays more underneath. He's been playing it forward early, but more successful as a center. The 26 on Saturday. Patient offense now by Wisconsin. This is Carlin. He gives it off. Oki goes up strong with the left hand. Oh, that's a nice move. That's a nice, strong move from a true freshman. I and mean, this kid hadn't sat out a year and beefed up. He's a good, solid player. And they look to him to score and rebound. A tough man-to-man -man defense. They fight over screens. As there you see Peterson. Here's a good pass inside. Neil Reed. Hits it on the layup. That time Jeremy Hall just turned his back, and Reed was able to take advantage of that and just make a quick cut to the basket. Good recognition and easy two. Very deliberate offense. It's high outside. Patterson sneaks around and knocks that ball. Let's see. All right, let's check it out. As you're watching Sam Oakey, and what I think he does really well is take the ball up strong, and he should. Strong guy. All right, good, good look from Brian Evans. Now, this is one of the things that 
Coach Knight has talked about that Brian Evans gets a lot of assist and it, and on that uh, particular play of course a real good pass but they're trying to get the ball out of Evans's hands in that situation and have the pass come from the guard into Evans. The last play the ball went off Wisconsin Indiana had it came down quickly Evans missed Harris Muye Zinovich and Charlie Miller both in the lineup for Indiana so they go with Reed and Wilkerson Miller Evans and Muye Zinovich on the inside. Another turnover, Jeremy Hall. It's now six, and that was one. Look at the concern on Dick Bennett's face. His team has done a nice job before the Big Ten of not turning it over, but it's not been as well when Big Ten play started. All right, and we've got some inexperienced players out front for both teams, but especially Wisconsin, and that's going to tell throughout the game. Carlin caught on that slap, and that sends Ron Wilkerson to the line. Number zero is also in for Wisconsin, Osita Washuku. 6'8 senior from Nigeria. Good job on the name there, Lazar. There's a good All look right. at Washuku. Now he's their most experienced player. He's a senior and has played a lot of ball for them this year and has been starting a lot of ball games. Good look at Sharon. Hits that first free throw. Only 63% on the year. So Indiana now up by two. Just under 13 minutes left, first half. Wilkerson will be called. He had his hand on Peterson as Peterson tried to move into an opening. Pretty simple offense. The guards trying to create some things on the outside. They look for Oki. On the inside, he's out right now, but we'll check in here shortly. He's their offensive threat. So they don't really have a go-to guy in the lineup now. And right now, they're going to be looking to Peterson. They're going to be looking for Doherty, too. Evans came over to help. Oh, good pressure now by Harris, and it forces Oshuku to step on the line. So a forced error that time as Harris came in some in-your-face defense. Coach Bennett alternating Doherty and Oki right now. He's got to keep at least one of those guys in at all times, it seems, to give him a little bit of scoring and also to continue to provide good rebound. Crowd doing some clapping now. They know that offense has not been what they wanted to. Here's Wilkerson inside, double teamed. Oh, good spin move on the lane. Reed decides not to take the shot. Clock down to eight and tossed out of bounds. Not much distance between uh, Miller and Harris on that pass. That's Four. a real good point, Laz. The spacing on the offensive end that time was, was just too tight to make any kind of effective pass. I think the guys are thinking correctly now, but that's only half the battle right now. They've got to get the job done in some way, and they've got to keep the spacing a lot better than it is right now. Hall, a very good ball handler on the outside. Peterson hits that jumper, and that ties the score at seven. Peterson's a good ball player. He's the he's a sophomore, and he's the first ever uh, Kentucky high school player to play at uh, Wisconsin. The second one is also in the game, too, Jeremy Hall. They're both from Kentucky. Wilkerson on the baseline. Good individual move that time. Got him within 10 feet of the basket, his fourth point. There's no question that Sharon has some great individual skills. And he can take advantage of a player like that. That's a real good shot for him to take. Reed staying right with Hall. More of an outside threat. Good matchup there. It's Oshuku and Harris Muye Zinovich inside. Easy rebound for Neil Reed to good block out. And he goes all the way, lays it up. Harris has got it, but got tied up low. And a jump ball. Possession arrow will be to the Badgers, but we've got timeout. 10.57 left. First half, low scoring, 9 to 7. Indiana leads it. Proves, though, as he hits a little jumper off the board. That was great recognition by Jeremy Hall. He sees that Sean Doherty has uh, Sharon Wilkerson posted up. Doherty understands it, too, keeps him on the backside and knows he can shoot right over him. Charlie Miller inside. 
Wilkerson takes advantage of his size on Hall. Turn about fair play there because Sharon does the same thing to Hall. Makes a real good cut, cut across the uh, free throw lane. Gets the ball and knows he's going to be able to go up and over Jeremy Hall. Carlin, the outside shot. In and out. He did get it to go, though. Another three point shot. I think the thing about Carlin that you're going to find is he's in there to not make mistakes. And he's going to do whatever the game brings to him. And at that time, you know, he shoots the three pointer, but watch him play good, solid defense, watch him control the ball pretty nicely, and just not make any mistakes. Good role player. Wilkerson way outside for the three. It's an air ball. Easy rebound for Oki. And this Wisconsin team is similar to Indiana. The fact that with young players, they're still trying to find out what their role on this year's team would be. And it really helps them, of course, as their careers go on to get that experience early. Here's Oki. Oh, shot fakes there. Doherty off. For the shooting four for both teams. Wisconsin shot just 34% against Penn State. Evans is short on this one. And again, the rebound to the Badgers. That time, Brian Evans, if you looked from the waist up, you're going to see really good follow through. The shot was missed in the legs that time. He just didn't get up and get into a shooting rhythm. There's low. Doherty tries to jump hook. And Patterson's going to pick up his second foul. 8.50 left first half. Right now it looks like a mirror for both teams because I think Wisconsin's trying to pound it in as much as they can. And here they get Sean Doherty again. And he's going to work the post pretty nicely. He's improved a lot since last year. He's put on some muscle, got a good shooting touch. You know, there's no question he's got good basketball skills. Played at Vincennes. He's got about a two-inch height advantage on Patterson. He tried to use it there. Missed the, to the right on that free throw. Good look at Sean. Right now we've talked about Wisconsin wanting to keep it low, low scoring for both teams, and we certainly have done that. Does that favor them? Oh, look he, out. He got inside on that rebound and jammed it in. So you don't want to, you don't want a guy like that to get off. I mean, he's he's kind of hung around and he's trying to want. He's, I think pretty much wondering, well, you know, is this going to be a game where I'm gonna, really going to struggle? And he gets a dunk off of a missed free throw, and that can really tune him in, get him fired up, and, and you know, he's a big part of their offense. Charlie Miller is short, and it goes off of Wisconsin. Mike Sanzeri with that call. I know at least one person in this uh, assembly hall that doesn't agree with that, and there he is. And he's making his voice known. This one time off Peterson. I'll tell you, Steve, this is a hustling team that Wisconsin has. A lot of young players, but they are here to play and play hard. Yeah, a lot of people have talked about Wisconsin being a team of the future. But, you know, they still can be uh, the kind of team that can cause a lot of trouble this year. It's going to win a lot of ball games. Good game for Indiana because they have not played hard in some of their ball games, and it's cost them dearly. Reed way outside as Wilkerson found it. Reed set up well for that shot, his fifth point, and ties the game. That was a much needed three pointer, there's no question. But the Indiana offense right now does look stagnant, but it may be a direct result of a good, hard defensive scheme by Wisconsin. They know how to play defense, and they've got some good, hard-nosed players. Washuku inside. Here's Doherty. He can shoot from the outside. Takes it on the drive. Patterson knocks that one away. Indiana with their first fast break. It gets Wilkerson a shot. Again, short. Most of the shots Indiana's taken, Steve, are falling short today. Still tied at 14. A quick game. 7-13 left first half. If I'm Wisconsin right now, I got to be real happy with the way things are going. Washuku, look at a big step there. Gets him all the way to the hole. He finishes with the left-hand shot. His first two. Big strong kid. He's not really a good offensive player, but he just took advantage of the situation presented to him there. Nice little left hand. 
Timeout, 6.56 left, and a scrappy Wisconsin team has the two-point lead. We'll be back after this. Then Wisconsin's got another two. They lead by two, but not for long. Brian Evans hits a three from the outside. That was the other guy I just mentioned. Those two are the three-point shooters consistently for Indiana. Clear out on the weak side as Wilkerson able to stay with Peterson. Oshuku not afraid at all, driving right in there using some muscle. But Doherty gets picked up for the foul on the rebound. Dick Bennett looking concerned. But as you mentioned, Steve, he's pleased with his score. Wisconsin has kept nine of their 14 opponents under 70 points this year, and five of them less than 58 at this pace, Indiana. Could be the sixth team to score under 58. Washuku picks up that foul inside. Although Indiana's a good shooting team from the outside, I still think it looks like they're trying to force that ball inside. Get uh, Wisconsin in some foul trouble. I think that was part of the game plan to establish inside play. But you certainly can't do it at the expense of not having any kind of offensive continuity or taking some good open outside shots. Right now, though, I think a lot of it has to be uh, credited to good Wisconsin defensive pressure. And that's not going to let up. They've set the tempo of this game. Bob Knight on the Indiana bench. Coach Dan Dockage has been working with Harris on his free throws. Good on the second one. So it's Indiana by two. 6.15 left first half. Reed finally gets to guard a player a little smaller than he is. It's kind of rare. Reed being 6'2. Doherty tries to use his size on Evans, takes him right into the basket, but let's see. Underneath, Sam Drury's calling an offensive foul, but Eddie Hightower on the outside is traveling. Well, I think in that situation, uh, they both were correct. <laughs> I think there's, <laughs> there's a little travel, there's a little foul. Now just. The question is, what happened first? Indiana gets the ball, eighth turnover for Wisconsin. Evans just posting right up. He's using his height on Peterson. A small lineup now for Wisconsin. Good pick that time as Harris got Evans open. He finds Harris. And a foul there as Carlin tries to recover back, cover up for a teammate who went to help. That was a heck of a feed by Evans to find Harris, and Harris was open, you know, a second or two even before that. I wonder if Harris was yelling for the ball because that's the kind of communication that the Indiana coaches have been looking for with this team is to help each other out on offense and defense and do a little talking out there. It's, uh, you know, it's not a game for people that don't like to communicate in some fashion, and I don't know if Harris yelled or not, but uh, you got to try doing that every now and then. You might get that ball. Charlie Miller steps in and gets Brian Evans, a baseline jumper. Seven now for Brian Evans. Indiana leads by four. Battling inside, Harris is going to pick up this foul. Trying to stay with Doherty. From Harris' standpoint, that's the kind of guy he's got to be able to come in off the bench and play tough. Move his feet, get in good defensive position. Be able to resist the offensive moves by Doherty, but not foul. Good pass. Wilkerson steals at Oriental. Did not see Sharon in the lane. He dishes off, and Evans gets it. Indiana doing very well off the fast break there. When you talk about passing lanes on defense, and Sharon Wilkerson was in one and got an easy pick. Dick Bennett's seen enough. He wants a 20-second timeout. He wants to do right now, just, hey, guys, we're, we're playing real well. Let's, uh, let's don't get behind by 10-12 going into the halftime. That's a good feed by Sharon here. Good recognition. He knew that they're going to be trailers. He didn't know who it was going to be, but he knew somebody was going to be coming. So he knows, make the move, turn around. It's not bad to have a little surprise if, that it's uh, Brian Evans. That's a good guy to pass to on a break like that. Well, I think Steve Indiana's going to have to take advantage of their non-half court offensive scoring threats because it's so difficult to score against this good defensive team by the Badgers. So you can see a nice run by Indiana. 
to move their lead up to six points because it's going to be tough half-court offense for Indiana. Sure, and these kind of bursts of offensive uh, scoring are the kind of thing that Coach Bennett does not want to have happen. He can't have eight, 10, and 12 zero runs against his squad. He's got to keep these guys settled down and playing good defense. Indiana, on the other hand, keep the tempo up. All from the outside. Only one shot, Luka Zinovic on that board. And Indiana forced to set up the offense. Not much picking going on, just a lot of cutting, but not screening. Well, there's a good screen. Charlie Miller comes across. He's open. Timing is everything, of course. Wilkerson pulls back for the jumper. Dick Bennett wanted an offensive foul. As he said, Wilkerson pushed off with that right hand. Eight points now for Sharon, so three of five from the field. You know, that's a heck of a jump shot for a guy like Sharon coming off the leg injury. I mean, he just he drove, he stepped in and, and went up strong, and here he comes back again. Three on two, another steal. Reed backs out. Evans. Good job of double teaming by Wisconsin as an Indiana player does get open. Evans couldn't get the shot away. Well, they're just sticky, you know. They're really, really low. Oh, there's a pass. Hit uh, Sharon right in the side of the head as he was going out to set a back screen. And there's a new sign in Indiana locker room that says no pass is a good pass unless it's caught. So all Sharon was open. He wasn't ready for it. Now timeout, 3.39 left. Indiana by 10, and Dick Bennett trying to get his team back in the game. It starts long before spring. For a lot of reasons, I have to make the right choices along the way. Because a successful harvest is more than hard work and a little luck. Finally, getting to this moment leaves me with a feeling that can't be explained. It can only be experienced. This is a great position for Neil Reed to be in to see the whole floor, the whole offensive floor. And he's seen all the action to the right. See Sharon cut. Sharon doesn't know how open he is. Now the problem with that, you know, you say, well, gosh, that's a great pass by, by Reed, but yet it wasn't caught. And that's trouble. But I think uh, he and Sharon are going to get together and work that thing out because <laughs> when you're that wide open, Sharon, you want the ball. Well, you need to know and take a look, see where that ball is. Sharon, of course, had picking. And screening in his mind, 12-0 now that run that Indiana has used to get their 10-point lead. Harlan sneaks in for an offensive board. Doherty there to finally put it in. Got to block him out. He's going to go to the offensive board every single time. If you don't get a body on him, he's going to come up with something good. Doherty has four. The lead now eight. Oh, Evans right into the lane, misses the shot. And Harris fouled on the rebound and Wisconsin player down and holding his leg. Let's look at the block out at the other end. We'll check it out to on the screen here. We see that Moselle Peterson puts up the ball and here comes Doherty in for the offensive rebound. That was Brian Evans man. Now Brian did go over to help out on Peterson. Somebody's got to get a body on him. Rotate, Rotate back down. Let's watch Carlin. He takes an injury as his own player falls into him. It was his left leg. Looks like a shin, and he's still down on the floor, obviously in some pain. And this is not good for the Badgers. 
Doherty picks up his second foul on the play. They've lost Sean Mason this year to a knee injury. Dwayne Dwayne with the fractured foot. Darnell Hoskins, a starting guard in December, left school, went to uh, Dayton, so they're down on their numbers. You see Carlo, he got his uh, leg really bent right under him there, that left knee. Ouch. So it might even be a knee injury. They lost Sean Mason to that ACL uh, uh, knee injury. And there you see trainer Tim Garl, Dr. Larry Rink, the Indiana medical staff. Let's take a look on Saturday. We've got a triple header for you. Michigan and Michigan State, Purdue and Minnesota. Penn State, Northwestern, the Big Ten schedule underway. And as expected, home teams having the advantage early. Visiting teams know they can make up ground with those victories. Purdue still undefeated. There you see Carlin. He's taken off the floor, not putting any pressure on that left leg as he uh, retires to the Wisconsin locker room. Washuku will come in for him, so Indiana tries to match up now. So a much bigger lineup now. Doherty, Oki, and Washuku all in for the Badgers. That's their biggest lineup, Patterson and Oriental. Indiana has same two guards, Reed and Wilkerson. They've gone the whole way. Here's Harris, the big guy inside, Evans and Miller. Much better form there by Muye Zinovic. Good rotation, nice height on the ball. Two in a row. And Indiana back up by 10. It looks easy, doesn't it? Yeah, step you know up what there, it's like, though, up there, a couple. <laughs> it is never that easy. If they just get these 17,000 people out of here, it's pretty darn easy. <laughs> it's easier in practice, isn't it? Yeah. That's when it was easy. A whistle away from the ball. That goes on Miller. 15 foul now, so Indiana doing a nice job to keep Wisconsin off the line, but Indiana not able to get there either. Wisconsin goes the line twice as much as their opponent. 16 to 8 has been their average, so eight free throws for the opponent, not very good. Okay. High low, here's Doherty High looking for Oki. He wants it. Good patience. Ten seconds on the shot clock. Wisconsin has two freshmen. Oops, there he goes. Oriental, good outside shooter. That, that was gets one of them. Peterson the rebound. Doherty follows. Finally, Wilkerson comes away with it. It's four on two. Charlie Miller. Oh, he goes down hard, and a block is called. Looks like all players are all right. But that foul on Oriental as. Miller went up high for that shot. Well, this is all about when he took off and when the defensive man got his feet set, if ever. It looked like he slid right underneath. And they're going to call that a defensive foul every time. Third Especially foul. Especially he's leaning on Oriental. So the 6'1 freshman picks up a uh, tough one. He comes right out of the game. Doherty out. Mandeville is in for Indiana as Wilkerson. Uh, goes over to talk to Bob Knight. Muye Zinovich leads with three points. All from the free throw line. Charlie Miller at the line. Miller just at 76% from the line. So one of Indiana's better free throw shooters. There you see his stats. Good on both. So after a very close game. Indiana stretched it out now. They lead by 12. Well, this is an important two minutes now. Right before halftime, this is a time that you don't keep your concentration. If you're Indiana, you can let Wisconsin slip back in there within four to six points at halftime. From the Wisconsin standpoint, they certainly want to stay good and steady and not have things like that happen. Wilkerson's done it on the defense. He goes the length of the floor. Oh, Shuka with the block from behind. Wilkerson never saw him coming. That's tough not to call that one goaltending because Wilkerson's hand and ball were above the rim before he even let it go. No call. Here's Oki. Turns and faces. And offensive foul. Brian Evans hits the deck. 
And he used a little Big Ten experience there as he sets Oki up for the charge. There it is. Yeah, Brian had both feet set. And that is, we'll take a look at the block at the other end. Whoops, may have missed one there. Should have been goaltending. Goal 10. Illinois comes with Booker Coleman, number 41, 6'9", sophomore. Also number 23, 6'1", freshman, Mike Kosol Sharon goes in. So they've gone a lot deeper than they normally like to. But injuries and foul trouble have dictated that. Richard Mandeville was just not set there. It, was, it wasn't such a bad shot. It just He shot it all off the left foot and didn't get both feet square and shoulder square. One minute left, first half. And Indiana foul this time on the drive. Peterson is very quick on that drive outside. And he caused that foul on Mandeville. Bob Knight and Richard Mandeville. He's got to drop off his man, know that that guard can be coming in there and, and supply some help. Yeah, just good foot movement is what Coach Knight was asking him to do over there in a nice kind of way. I don't think Richard got over there near quick enough, and you end up with a foul, put a guy on the line. You've got to be in this game. The minute Coach Knight puts in there, you have got to be in the game as if you've been there for 10 minutes. And that's difficult for some players to do. You've got to react quickly. And even though that may be his first time down defensively, when that guard comes in there, he's got to know to drop off his man and help out his man. Free throw missed. Under a minute now. Neil Reed, yes, from the outside. His second three-pointer of the game. Eight points for Reed. That's a really good three in transition. And everybody was moving. Brian takes it into the hole, turns around, kneels wide open, but guys were in rebounding position just in case he did miss it. Real good shot. Crowd comes to life as they've seen this Hoosier team build their lead to 15. Not a lot of offense to cheer about, but it has been enough to get this Travel. lead. And you're exactly right. Owashuku called for the travel, 12 turnovers, and that has been the story of this first half. 22nd timeout now called by Indiana. This will give Indiana a chance to set up their last play without using a full timeout. One thing we've noticed from this team this year, Steve, is when they've had time to set up a play through an out-of-bounds uh, timeout situation, they've been able to run it and get things done. It's just been on a consistent basis where they've had trouble recognizing. What, what do you expect here on this out-of-bounds play? Well. A couple things on your first point there, that has to do with focus. I think coming out of a out of a, uh, a timeout, they're very focused on one play. They've got to keep that game plan in focus throughout 40 minutes. Take a look at the standings here. Penn State, Michigan State went out and beat Illinois on the road. That's Indiana's next opponent this Saturday. Purdue is still undefeated. And I think a surprise there, Steve. Illinois at the bottom, 0-3. They are given their pre-conference schedule and uh, their record. I think it's a big surprise. Juani Garris has been injured, their great uh, point leader and score. So that's had a big effect. Ten seconds, here we go. Indiana looking for the last shot. That's the guy they want to take it, Evans. Knocked away by Oshuku, 3.3 left. So that's time now for Indiana to set the out of bounds play. They have Reed take it out of bounds. It goes to Charlie Miller, he turns and Got caught a little bit under the basket and a foul as Mandeville's gonna pick it up as he tried for the rebound and a big foul. It puts Indiana over the limit, 17 fouls, and now a one and one for Wisconsin. Put him right where Coach Knight didn't want him, and that's the free throw line. They can score a couple here going into halftime and He'll be in that uh, 12, 13 point range. Indiana, the last 13 minutes of this half, has outscored Wisconsin 19 to 2. So a real drought for the Badgers here. And that free throw is good by Coleman, only averaging one and a half points a game. So this would be three points. In the last 13 minutes for Wisconsin, credit Indiana's defense. That's for six tenths of a second. Not enough time for Indiana to get the shot away. And we are at halftime. Indiana, low scoring game, has the lead 33 to 20. We'll be back with our halftime after these messages.
just There you see the scoring first half. Brian Evans, the big scorer for Indiana. Got great help from the guard combination, Reed and Wilkerson. And for Wisconsin, Moselle Peterson, their big gun. And Sam Oakey not yet on track. Only four first half points. Indiana has first possession, second half, and we are underway. One of the things the scoring graphic didn't show about the guards that combined for 16 points, but they also had four assists, four rebounds, and no turnovers from Wilkerson and Reed in the first half. And a near turnover there as Charlie Miller's pass is finally picked up by Reed. Shot clock at two. Evans misses. And again, another turnover by Wisconsin. That has really hurt him. 14 turnovers now. He's got Dick Bennett shaking his head. Yeah, I'm sure that's one of the things that they talked about coming in here to tonight's game was, fellas, we do not want to see a high turnover figure. The 14 is too high for them right now. They don't like a lot of change of possessions. The uh, scoring down, the tempo down. I hope he can get after defensively too, can he? Andre Patterson open from the free throw line. His first two of the second half. First two of the game as Patterson didn't score in that first half after coming off their career high 26. Evan slaps it away from Oki. Andre again. Good cut down the middle by Neil Reed. Reed got away, but as he tried to make that pass back to Evans, the ball was knocked out of bounds. That was not a passing situation, Neil. Yes. Take it on up, bud. You earned it. I'll tell you, Kitchell said the same thing the other day. <laughs> you got to be greedy about getting those shots. I got another score here with me tonight. Shoot, shoot. <laughs> the war cry oh. goes up. <laughs> Wilkinson does. Andre Patterson's going to get two there. Well, two good things happened there, obviously. The rebound by Andre was a good, strong rebound, so that gets him in the game that way. And then he takes it up strong. And you would think that would become a natural thing for Andre, but to this point, it is not a consistent thing for him to get the ball and understand now the second part of this is to take it up as strong and put it in. And you can get a lot of three-point plays like that. Owashuku checks back in as Wisconsin starts to get into foul trouble. Oriental leaves. Charlie Miller switches now down to guard Sam Oki. But Indiana's defense has been brilliant tonight. Doherty open. High off the rim, there's Sam Oki with the offensive board. And Jeremy Hall answers with a three-pointer as Reed tried to put the pressure on. Somebody needs to block out that time. Got the Wisconsin three points. Oh, tough pass, and it was threaded in there by Wilkerson. Charlie Miller missed the layup. Here's Oki. Look out below, Sam Oki, as he skied over the Indiana players and dunked that one with the right hand. Folks, that is big time. I mean, he took it strong, and he made up his mind to do it, and got it done. Patterson in the lane. Wisconsin double teamed. Well, for you Indiana fans, Get used to seeing this kid play because he's going to play a significant number of minutes and he's going to be a tough player for a long time in the Big Ten Neil if he Reed sticks around. Sneaks it in there on the out of bounds play. 
I think I remember you doing that once, Steve. It was that game we played on an eight-foot goal. When <laughs> you came in there like that. Yeah. <laughs> I was wondering what dream you were talking about, Laz. There's a whistle. Indiana now a quick foul. That one on Reed is first. They play a little different. Back in the early 70s, oh. we didn't even uh, dunking wasn't allowed, and we didn't think yeah. about stuff like that. Oh. Whereas these kids have watched it, and, and really from a young age have started to to play above the rim. Oh, sure. A lot different than when you and I played. Oh, I was so happy dunking wasn't allowed. <laughs> <laughs> I did not want to embarrass myself. In a slow starting half, as similarly saw in the first half, both teams struggling offensively. Indiana only seven points here. Neil Reed make that ten as Reed hits the three-pointer from the outside. I think an important thing for Indiana to do is not let this lead sink down below ten points and give Wisconsin an opportunity to think that they can come back in this game easily. Peterson hits from the outside on a three. And you really think, Steve, against a team like Wisconsin, a ten-point lead is a big lead because they're not a team that's a score points quick. Right. I think it's real key to just keep that pressure on them. They're not going to let you get closer than 10, 12 points the rest of the way in. Jeremy Hall, they have gone to the three-point shot, just as we say, twice in a row now. They used the three-pointer to cut the lead down to 12. I think they're capable of that three-point shot, but they'd rather not go to it. Sure, I think that's a good point. They'd rather not, but uh, obviously they've decided to put a little offensive pressure on Indiana early on. And the defensive pressure now gives the ball back to the Badgers. 15-43 left. We've got timeout. It's Indiana by 12, but the Badgers are hot from the outside. So here's the, the benefit of Indiana continuing to, to blast away inside is it's gotten a uh, under-numbered Wisconsin team in some foul trouble. Yeah, and I think that was really good recognition by Indiana to punch it inside to Andre and good recognition by Andre to take him quickly to the hole because only good things are going to happen in that case. And for Indiana fans, the good thing there was a fourth foul on Doherty. Evans was very long on that three-point shot. Wisconsin has the ball. I tell you, Steve, they just keep coming at you. This is a difficult team to play against. Without question, well coached. They stay within their limitations. Blocked by Patterson, tipped away by Washuku. Watch Patterson on that last block. Good timing by Andre, and I mean, he can do that all night long. He's just got to continue to stay focused and be aware of where the ball is. Take it up strong here. Shot fake, and that's going to go. And a foul on Oki. Big play there for Andre Patterson. You know, we're seeing a different Andre Patterson than we saw in the first half. They're still pounding it into him, but I think he's going up strong, holding on to the ball. Good ball fake there. Gets the man up and took it up strong again. That's two times in a row. See there, he motioned. He wanted that basket to count. Go to the line. Sam Oakey, a tough look on his face as he realized he's picked up his fourth foul. Andre, all those points coming in the second half. So Oakey's still in the game with four, though he's trying to be substituted for. Indiana by 12. And he calls timeout. I think Dick Bennett wanted to make sure he got him out. This is a 20-second timeout. Wanted to make sure that he get Oki out of there without picking up that fifth foul here. Still over 14 minutes left in the second half. I really like Oki's response to that. He was ready to fire a three. He knew he's coming out. <laughs> I mean, I know what, believe me, I know what's going through his mind. I'm going to get one more up. Let's look at that Wisconsin foul trouble. There are two big guys inside. They're leading rebounders and one and two leading scorers, both with four. Oriental is the point guard. He's got three. So mass substitution now as Dick Bennett forced to go with players who all his players are young, but who also have not played a lot this far into the season. Move Moselle Peterson, 13 out to guard, and 23. Kosol Sharan is in. Only 6-1, so it's a short lineup now for the Badgers as well. 
Got that pass through somehow. Patterson blocked that one from behind. And there you see Indiana's height advantage. Yeah, and I also see the inexperience of some of the players that Wisconsin has to play with right now. Good shot by Charlie Miller. Not afraid to take the open shot only after one pass. Good confidence by Miller, his sixth point. This is a chance for Indiana to open up that offense and stretch that lead. I think you're absolutely right. This is the time this kind of team, Indiana has to learn to, to smell it right now and really apply the pressure. They can put this game away in the next few minutes if they stay focused. Brian Evans outside. Short on that three. And Wilkerson had good position. Kosol Sharon with that foul. You know, on the Wisconsin side, I think Coach Bennett, I know, would like to get down to about eight minutes and still be in this ball game. He, these next five minutes for Wisconsin are as important from their standpoint to stay in it as it is from Indiana's standpoint to stretch the lead out. So watch him make all kinds of maneuvers to, to keep his team in it so he can get Doherty and Oki back in there. He brings yeah. Oriental in to give some leadership at the point because he's lacking the scoring punch on the inside for the big guys. Patterson's found a spot though, right there on the block. Turning jumper is off. Made it away just a little far on that shot. But he is looking to score, and that's a good sign for Indiana. Just check the scores. 14 points with 13 minutes to go now. Away which way the ball. this thing goes. Neil Reed picks that one up. Indiana's fourth team foul. Two on Reed. There's your rebound. Wisconsin not a big team, but they are scrappy and usually out rebound their opponent. Pass inside. Patterson's going to pick that foul up as Coleman fought for inside position. Now that's three on Patterson. You know, it's interesting with respect to Wisconsin. They're playing without their two most experienced guards. One, Haskins, who transferred at the semester break. Watch out here. No place to go with that pass. Right. And come down the other way, Osita. Gets the jam, so that it's not Patterson catching the ball. It's not the pass to be thrown. Patterson couldn't do anything when he got it. Yeah, that time Coach Knight looked not at Patterson, but at Wilkerson. Why? Wasn't now, needed. Patterson turns his head. The ball goes right to the Badgers. Four on two. Washuku is off, and there's Patterson again. Big play for Indiana. That would have cut the lead to 10. You can hear him grip the ball that time. You can hear the snap all the way up here. Jump shot, Patterson is good. He's taken over this second half on both ends of the floor. Nine second half points. Well, he's combined a little bit of inside, a little bit of outside this second half. But I think just overall played more aggressively and more in tune. Jump ball as Oriental tried to come in. Patterson really didn't leave his feet. He kept those arms straight up. And it'll be a jump ball. 11.50 left in the game. We've got timeout. Indiana leads it by 14. Look at Patterson beating everybody down the floor. Wilkerson gets him the ball. Evans does it again, but blocked by Dory as he reached under to try to avoid the block. You can see the three points tonight. Wisconsin above their season's average. Andre came up a little bit gimpy there in that exchange. I don't know if he sprained an ankle. He's got a little bruise on the thigh. He's hurt. He is limping here again. There you see it. Looks like that right leg, right ankle. Eight points now for Doherty. Officials time out, and they're going to look at Andre to see if he needs some medical attention. Oriental checks back in. like Patterson will come out and Neil Reed checks in for him. The problem to score is bench is the horn. The band's tuning up. <laughs> Left in the on position. What key is that, Steve? Oh, yeah. Go think that. back to a music appreciation. What key is that? I think the band, the band found it right away. They know that key. 
I think it's the key that was the same grade I got in their C. Now, now that is the key to victory. That's what that oh, is. Yeah, that's the key oh, to victory. So very clever. Let's take a timeout as we work uh, on the IU scoring bench. 62-46, Indiana leads it. Ah, to play for a team and win, we've had trouble. And uh, there have been some really good segments against a team like Kansas, a team like Kentucky. Um, Duke, I think, was a game that could have been and should have been won by the Hoosiers. And they've solved the problem. The band strikes up, and the crowd is ready. <laughs> the band was, was ready. <laughs> I mean, they're right on cue. Reed, the big contributor. It was Patterson on Saturday. Indiana's lead score, Neil Reed, with 17 points. And he's ready to go. Get that scoreboard up there, and I want to play some ball. D. Compton, the uh, facilities director here at Assembly Hall, did the job. Looked like he uh, just spliced the wire there, Steve, after he uh, has the way to fix that. Moselle Peterson had a nice game. Usually their sixth man came in with 10 points. And now uh, they work on moving that scoreboard up. Indiana trying to loosen up a little bit here. Let's look at the Big Ten season. Indiana, a tough road loss to the Michigan State team that in, in a turn that went on and and it's still 2-0. and oh. A big game with Michigan. They're going to have to play this Saturday. But uh, a young team by Indiana, always difficult to win on the road. And a very tough schedule coming up latter part of January. I think that's real key, Lance. You know, after tonight's game, on to Illinois, then to Purdue, and then home against Michigan. And I think soon thereafter at Penn State. I mean, this is not easy. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I think Coach Knight's been talking about maturity or lack thereof, and these guys have got to mature real quick because going on the road in the Big Ten is not easy at any time, but especially in this next period of uh, two to three weeks, Indiana's going to be tested, and they're going to have to play some real good, sound, smart basketball. And that's a guy right there who has struggled some early this year, but has really seemed to have, have learned his role Playing at center, which is a little more comfortable for him. He's scoring some points out of the game right now with some foul trouble. And in fact, if Indiana keeps his lead, may not have to come back in the game. Patterson's been the biggest difference. And, and I think Neil Reed being really uh, uh, looking to score, he's been uh, uh, very consistent here the last four or five games, starting back with the Hoosier Classic. And the scoreboard now back in position, and we're ready to go. Indiana must concentrate now and, and pick up with what they uh, had left off with, some patient offense, trying to get to that free throw line. Here we go. Evans driving inside and gets the easy jumper. Oki trying to avoid the foul. Once again, Indiana had the floor spread nicely. Some good sharp cuts, and the ball is in the right position to make the pass for Evans to make his shot. Peterson tried the shot fake. Evans got it. Four on three. He goes back to Sharon Reed. Smart. Ordinarily would have taken that shot, but with the lead, he passes to Miller, who hits a three-point shot. It's Indiana now by 21. Steal by Eggers. Wilkerson on the dribble. And a foul will go against the Badgers. The personal foul over this number 13, Peterson. Peterson will come out with three. And 23, Mike Kosol Sharon checks in. And Wilkerson will get a chance for Indiana at the line. Only 44, uh, let's check that, 63% for Wilkerson, 21 to 33 from the line. He's come along in the leadership uh, category too, Steve, and that's been needed by this team. Yeah. Sure has. Uh, I'm enjoying watching now 
Brian Evans and Sam Oki talking a little bit. Uh, Oki broke out in the lap. They're still talking on the free throw line. I don't know if Brian told him, hey, listen, uh, next time down, I, I can guarantee you it's going up. <laughs> and I, I dare you to stop me. Or, uh, I don't know. Or maybe they're just talking about stuff in general. Ten now for Wilkerson. Must be trying to learn a bit about this Big Ten life. And a guy like Evan sure can uh, teach him about another turnover. Indiana using quick hands tonight. Eggers. He'll take the three this time around, and he's got it. He really woke up well at the Hoosier Classic at four or five, and not hesitant to take that shot now as Indiana's got its biggest lead, 26 points. Oh, there's a bomber outside, and that's Jeremy Hall. Another three-pointer. Well, obviously, this is going to be another one of those games that you Look in the score box tomorrow if you haven't watched the game. And look and see a 20 point win by Indiana and think, well, that's pretty much what you expected, but a lot tougher game than that. And yet, to Indiana's credit, they made it into a strong 40 minute effort. And that's what this team wanted to do a slow start the first seven minutes. We're down 16 14, but then came right back. With a big offensive threat to close the half and lead by 13. Hall, the same spot again. Hits another three-pointer. As we approach the two-minute mark, Indiana by 22 points. Charlie Miller, the good pass. Evans has it inside. And Brian will go to the line. Indiana with some substitutions. Mandeville, Louie Zinovich, and Kevin Lemmy will come back in. Hall's four of eight, trying to get his team back in this game with some three-point shooting. Robbie Eggers leaves, and Sharon Wilkerson leaves. Nice game by Wilkerson. He gets congratulations from Bob Knight. Sam Oakey leaves, as does Doherty. Evans good on that free throw. And there you see the IU bench. Coach Dan Dockage always with some words of wisdom, they'll, Norm Ellenberger the same. Mandeville checks in, not the same look on the Wisconsin bench. Evans leads with 18, but this team has a long way to go, lots to learn, but they have time to do it with. Another steady job, seven assists for Evans. So that's still elusive, a triple-double, double figures in points, rebounds, and assists. Has eluded him again, but he gets off and close it in different games. Under two minutes as Indiana moves to two and one. Wisconsin will fall to one and two. Luge Zinovich on the board. Tries to hold on. Chris rolls in for Indiana. Indiana just needing to play good, steady, smart here. They're not going to lose the game, but they certainly want to have a good minute and a half here to go in knowing that they've played a pretty solid 40. Harris goes out to Lemmy. Always the crowd favorite. Eight seconds to shoot. Rolls Will. Outside, it's off. Harris chases it down. New shot clock. And Indiana will use it. Under a minute now. Lemmy shot fake. Kevin knows the only one to please in this crowd is sitting on the bench. <laughs> <laughs> He's got his priorities pretty well lined up. And a whistle now, and that one will go against Indiana on the rebound. Harris Mujezinovic picks up the foul. Here's number 33, Brian Vraney, 6'6 sophomore. So Wisconsin gets all their players in. Indiana's trip to Madison will be late in the year as the schedules flip-flop. So Indiana's third to last game will be against the Badgers. You gonna go up for that one, Lance? We're gonna be up there, and we, uh, you, Steve, and I make an annual trip with our his father, my father-in-law. I think we're gonna take that Wisconsin trip this time. Cheer the team on. 
and relive some old glory from our days against Wisconsin Husky. <laughs> Speak for yourself. <laughs> my, my average up there is about <laughs> two points per game. Good pass. This is rolls in size. It goes to Miller. And Charlie will get a chance at the line. Charlie did not start tonight, but he has played considerably. He's got nine points. Miller has got some offensive potential. He's shown it in spurts, but again, not yet consistently. Ten points now for Miller. And it's Indiana by 24. And Chris Rolls with a foul now as he tries to put some pressure on Jeremy Hall. Coach Ron Felling there on the Indiana bench and Bob Knight. A lot of preparation goes into these games. Looks like Indiana had this uh, Wisconsin team scouted pretty well. And after a slow start offensively, Indiana able to knock 78 points on that board. Five more than Wisconsin normally gives up. And easily enough to win this game. All hits. One oh. out of two. Jeremy. Uh, as that one spins That's around. 22 seconds left. Charlie Miller for three. It's just off. Indiana grabs another board. Mandeville jumper on the That's a three-pointer as he's behind the line. Last chance for Wisconsin. Jeremy Hall lets it fly. It's off. And Indiana moves to 2 and 1. 81 55. They beat the Badgers as the coaches meet at half court. We'll be back with more after these messages.